Hello and welcome to another video. In this lesson we're going to talk about the difference between risk appetite, risk tolerance, risk profile, and risk register. So an important thing to keep in mind for these terms is that these are ISACA terms and ISACA is the organization. This is not ISC squared. This is the organization that issues the other certifications related to information security that are commonly uh, sought after by security professionals, such as the Certified Information Security Manager and the Certified Information Systems Auditor. So just an important distinction there. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video is because I, these terms are important and I do believe that you're not gonna see them in the common body of knowledge, but you probably will see them in an exam question. So. What do all of these mean? Well, what is risk? Remember, risk is the chance of something bad happening. And so when you talk about these other terms, we're just gonna kind of simplify these here because you don't really need to know these in detail. You just need to know them a little bit for when you see them appear in an exam question, which I believe you probably will. So the risk appetite, that's gonna be the organization's general stance on risk. So for example, you as an organization might have uh, stance on on not risking your data. So for example, you might just say, we're not gonna do anything that increases our chance of a data breach or a PII breach or something like that. So then your risk tolerance is gonna be an actual threshold. And the threshold could be something like, you know, we're gonna keep our security alerts under 20 events every day, just threw that number out there. I know it's probably way higher than that. But uh, risk profile would be an official document that your organization creates. So uh, some kind of policy or uh, charter or something, some kind of statement that basically says, this is what we tolerate, this is our appetite, this is our tolerance, and it kind of outlines the whole risk profile of the company. And then you have, you have your risk register, which this is kind of just like a listing, uh, lists out the risks. It's like a spreadsheet used to manage the risks. It, it shows the owner. It might show uh, the severity of the risk. It might show the description of the risk, uh, discussion or mitigation plan. It might show the dollar amounts of the cost of mitigation or the mitigation date, the mitigation status, and so on and so forth. So if you're not asleep yet, this is a, an example of a question you might see appear on the CISSP exam, and I just wrote this one. The question might look something like this. If a company's risk tolerance is 50 events per day based on its risk appetite, after viewing its risk profile and learning that 100 events occurred on any given day, what recommendation should the security practitioner enter into the risk register? So. The thing to keep in mind is that you can't understand the question in its entirety until you see what options are available. So let's check out what options it has. What is the security practitioner gonna recommend? A recommendation to accept the risk based on its given risk tolerance level, or a recommendation to transfer the risk according to the risk profile, or a recommendation to avoid the risk after consideration of other events in the risk register, or a recommendation to mitigate the risk according to the number of events. So the thing to keep in mind with this question, now that we see the whole question in its entirety, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reread it. So in, in my other video, I kind of cover how you should break down the CISSP questions. You're always gonna read it a couple of times. And sometimes it might take three or four times to really understand what they're asking you. If you read all this, you know, they're throwing out all these terms, risk appetite, blah, 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 blah. But they're basically saying, if your tolerance is 50 and your events are at 100, what's the recommendation for the risk register? Now, the key word is risk here. So don't worry about the fact that it says register. You're looking at the options available down here. Notice that there's a pattern that we can see. They're saying, accept the risk read through this, blah, 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 transfer the risk, blah, 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 avoid the risk, and blah, 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 mitigate the risk. So essentially what this question is asking is, what should you do with this particular risk? Should you accept it? Should you transfer it? Should you avoid it or mitigate? And this is from domain one, and this is covering the four decisions that you can make regarding risk. So the answer to this question is actually going to be, well, let's, let's work through this here. So if we have a 50, if we have 100 events and our tolerance is 50, what's the recommendation? That's essentially what this question is asking. So do we accept the risk based on its given risk tolerance level? We need to filter out some information here. So, you know, some of these questions can be very wordy. So 
Are we going to accept it? I don't think so, because we're over the threshold, right? So they're saying based on the risk tolerance, no. That would be a no, so we can rule that one out. We're looking for stuff that we can rule out. So B, we move on to B, a recommendation to transfer the risk according to the risk profile. Now, see, again, if you don't understand these terms, you don't really need to because you know that you're over the threshold and they're saying, what should you do with the risk if it's over a threshold? Are we going to transfer it according to the risk profile? Well, we don't know what the risk profile is, so you can kind of throw that one out in your mind temporarily. Let's move on to C, a recommendation to avoid the risk after consideration of other events in the risk register. Well, so do we know what these other events are in the risk register? No, we don't. So I think we can throw this one out. So C is out, A, B, and C are out. So we move on to D. D says, a recommendation to mitigate the risk according to the number of events. And after discussing this with you all, because it's actually been a while since I looked at this question, I think D makes the most sense. And this is the, this is the option that I would pick, and I think this is the right answer. So once again, you don't need to know exactly what these terms mean, but I think it's good to know and to, to be aware of them so that it can help you in the exam for when you come across a question like this that seems like, oh, you might look at this and go, oh crap, this was not in the CBK. This is not something that I understand. It's not something I studied. You should still be able to navigate through the question and understand what it's really asking you. So you look for some keywords and you try to really understand. You read the whole thing a couple times and sometimes you won't understand what they're actually asking you until you read the options as well. So I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit about the difference between the risk terms and to help you navigate through the difficult questions in the CISSP exam. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.